Hey guys, uh, in this video we're gonna have a look at how to make this effect. Uh, the special thing about this video is we're gonna be making some fluid in Blender and yeah, we are starting with After Effects for tracking because After Effects track is really great than Blender. Maybe Blender is better but it takes some time to track. So we're gonna, uh, we have to, you know, we have to fix so many problems we're gonna face in Blender but After Effects does it very faster. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put our, uh, our, uh, our footage into After Effects. Uh, I will also put the link in the description to the Zoom footage. Uh, I have downloaded it from Paxels.com. I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go to the directory where I have saved it. I'm going to go here and this is the file that uh, we're going to use. I'm going to hit Import. Here we go. And now uh, what we need to do, uh, we need uh, to uh, just grab this to a new composition. Okay, so we have a footage here. If we gonna play it, it's very long, and I don't want to be longer because we just gonna make a ten second of video. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come to composition, composition settings, and this is actually one minute and twenty one second. I'm gonna go for just twenty seconds or maybe ten seconds. Yeah, I'm gonna go for ten seconds. I'm gonna make it zero zero and hit OK. And now we just have ten seconds of video, and this is what we want because we're gonna add the the cookie here uh, with some simulation going on, and that's something really great. So uh, first, we're going to track camera. Uh, if it was great, then we're going to go for this. But if it was not great, we're gonna be picking some uh, colors adjustment and other stuff. So I'm just, I'm just gonna hit track camera and I'm gonna come to advanced and click detailed analysis and that's bad for these to get tracked uh, okay so we have some weird thing going on which says a huge number of frame I think I'm gonna cancel it I'm gonna delete it I think there's something went wrong in the footage composition settings uh, frame rate is fine. Uh, okay, so I think I'm, I'm gonna make it uh, pre compose and I'm gonna move all attribute. Maybe I'm gonna try it again and let's see how many frames do we have right now. And uh, okay, yeah, we got limited frame which is 240 and we solved the problem. And let's wait for these to get tracked. Okay, so I think it's tracked, and if we play it, we got some perfect track here. But the main problem with this track, we don't have enough trackers here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna get rid of the camera track. I'm gonna come to effects and presets, and I'm going to search for curves because we want to make it crispier. And if it's not crispy, it's not gonna track well. So I'm gonna just grab it into our footage, and I'm gonna play around with the values. Like, you know, I'm just gonna tweak it around, I'm gonna make it, uh, I'm gonna increase it, actually we're increasing the contrast of the video, and that's it. This is what we want. And I think this is perfect, I'm gonna pre-compose it again, I'm gonna hit, okay. Okay, so now it's time to retrack our footage, and click track camera, and again, come up to advanced, and click detailed uh, analysis. It's totally tracking again, uh, we have to add for these. Okay, so the tracking I think is finished and now it's time to solve this and it's automatically solved the camera. Uh, we're gonna need some time. Okay, so we have a great track here, which is pretty perfect and we got some track on ground and this is the best thing we want. And if we play it, we call them all the way to the end of the video and yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to the middle of the video and I'm going for some trackers here. I'm gonna select some of them, I'm gonna hit right click and create solid and camera. Okay, so now uh, if we just play it, uh, as you can see, it's perfectly tracked and this is what we want. It's time to grab this data into Blender. How to do it? Well, I actually made a tutorial, the previous tutorial, and then a step by step a, a guide on how to export your tracking data into Blender using a script called uh, export composition data to the JSON and I have explained how to install it and all of those stuff you can check it out but for now I'm just going to uh, export this so I'm gonna come up here I'm gonna select everything we have here I'm gonna come to file uh, script and I'm gonna come click export composition data to JSON and click it 
now it's time to select the folder for this one i'm just gonna go for uh maybe here just select the folder wherever you want but make sure to remember it because we're gonna use it later on in blender i'm just gonna call it track or something else you're just gonna call it anything else and just click export so now our data is exported and we don't need to tweak anything in uh, after effect and now it's time to move on to blender and let's begin our blendy journey so here we are in blender and now it's time to get rid of this most highlight cube delete it and come up to file import and after effect composition convert it to json and if you want to know about this add-on i have already done a video in i actually it's a previous video with some more tips and i'm just going to click it and i'm going to go to the directory where i saved the composition data from after effect so it was here this is track.json click import and now we have something in our scene okay so first of everything we're gonna know about that uh i'm gonna expand this that this plan is just useless it's just a shot that we used in after effects so that's we we just don't need this uh plan i'm just gonna delete it it's useless in blender for blender you know okay so hit a select everything and just come up to your timeline Click G and grab the keyframe into the first frame because the After Effect timeline starts from zero and Blender timeline starts from one. If it was different, it's not gonna work perfectly. That's why we are doing this. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is to come up to output settings uh, here. If we look at our footage, it have 29.97 frame per second. If it's not matched perfectly, it's gonna be messed. You know, it's not gonna work perfectly. So try gonna match all of the settings with the footage and I think other settings are perfectly matched. And now it's time to select the camera, go to camera view, and if we play it, we got some perfect motion, but we don't have anything in background. In order to add a footage, I'm gonna come to camera tracking data, and I'm gonna click background image, and I'm gonna expand it, click add image, and click movie clip, and open. Open the footage uh, that we used in After Effects. So I'm gonna go to videos, pick soft videos. Okay, this is this is just a directories uh, where I save file. Okay, so this is mainly the footage that we use. If you click open clip, now if I just increase the opacity, play it. Let's just check it if it's working perfectly. yep it's just connected with uh, the background footage this is what we want and now it's time to add something into the scene and we have uh, an object a 3d object which is downloaded from cg traders i will put the link in the description down below you can check it out or you can use your own model if you do have like a donor or something uh, before doing anything else i'm gonna hit Control s and save this file because if we mess up something we're gonna have a backup and that's why we're gonna save it i'm just gonna click i'm gonna name it something like uh cookie vfx or something maybe you want to call it i'm just gonna hit sell blender file and uh okay so we have a blender uh, object i'm gonna open it okay so this is the model that we're gonna use it's actually a photo scan uh you can just decrease the number of uh, vertices if you want you could do oh it's actually been perfect it's optimized uh, you don't need to decrease anything it's just perfect okay so this is the man model it's some amazing texture with some amazing normals i'm gonna hit Control c copy objects or you can also paint it from the blend file but i'm just gonna click Control c and hit Control v to paste that file and now what we do have is a cookie here okay uh we want the cookie to be snapped here in order to snap it select this empty object hit shift ace cursor to select it so we gotta have a cursor here i'm just gonna click uh the cookie and hit shift ace selection to cursor and what we do have we have something that is just snapped into the plan and this is what we want so we're gonna hit s to scale it up i'm just gonna move it up uh if we play it uh yeah it's working perfectly 
So this is what we want. I'm going to rotate it on some perfect axes. Uh, OK, the next thing that we're going to change is to change the transfer orientations into local. Uh, so we will be able to rotate it or something like these. It's actually not a Z axis in global, but in fact, it's just a local orientation which shows the, the normal means which side does it face. The angle does change with it, as you can see, Y axis is that one, but it's that way. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so mainly, uh, our work is to animate these. Uh, so first of everything, we're gonna add a keyframe for rotation. I'm gonna go to the in frame, and I'm gonna rotate it on the Z axis, maybe something like this. I click I rotation. Uh, another thing, hit T in the timeline, click linear. So we have a linear motion, not a busier motion. Uh, okay, so it's perfectly working, and this is what we want. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do. Is to select this plan, rotate it on Z axis before rotating it, make sure to change it to local so we will not mess up anything. I'm just gonna move it to side and I'm gonna scale it on X axis like that, and I'm gonna move it on Z axis like that so we do have a space to work on the shadows and other stuff. So hit S and scale it on Z axis like that. So we do have uh, something that paste shadows on. And if you play it, yeah, this is what we want. OK, so if you go to material view, uh, before doing anything else, we're going to save the file because if you lose anything or if we just crashed or blunder, it's going to help us to back up the data. OK, I'm going to play it and see how does it feels like. It feels good. Now select the plan, go to object data, and then what we're going to do is to click visibility. Uh, okay, so there's nothing here because of EV render. We need to change it to cycles to get so many features. I'm going to change it to GPU compute if you do have. I'm going to turn on denoise for the viewport because I love it. You can also play around with the samples and make sure to come to film and click tar transparent. And then select the object, the plan object, go to object data. And now if we click visibility, we got a bunch of options that we can play around, but we just uh, have to deal with shadow casual, click it. So it will just let the object to cast shadow on this plan and that's it. Okay. So as promised, we're going to be making some uh, fluid simulations as well. That feels good enough. So. The first thing for fluid simulation is we need to have a flow object then a domain object. Then we can have uh, an effector like this cookie, which can affect the fluid for some instance. I'm going to hit control S. OK, so now it's time to add some cube as a domain object. So make sure that if you add a domain into our object, make sure that it have the same orientation as these plan does have because it's something what we want. I'm going to go to right side or something x axis shift a i'm gonna add a mesh and it's gonna be a cube just scale it up because it's very tiny and this is not what we want we want to have a perfect uh fluid going on and i'm gonna go to right view i'm just gonna rotate it accordingly i'm gonna move it up slightly i'm gonna scale it up on y axis and uh, make sure that your cube this contains your effector, your flow object, and anything that is included in the fluid simulation. So I'm going to scale it up because our effector is going to be up. And I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to go to camera view and see we do have a perfect spacing here. I'm going to scale it down slightly. And if I move it down, I'm going to go to solid view. I'm going to move it down to actually touch the, the plan object. I'm also going to rotate it on Y axis to actually align it with uh, the plan object or the shadow catcher. OK, so now what we got, we got a domain object which is going to help us to create some amazing uh, fluid and hit control S and maybe we can increase the Y scale if your system is good enough. I'm going to go for this scale. I'm going to move it. Go to camera view. We got a big and a huge domain that's going to help us to make our fluid. And if we play it, it's perfectly working. 
Now it's time to add a flow object. In order to add it, we're going to go to X axis. We're going to click Shift A. We're going to add an icosphere, maybe, and just grab it up. Make sure that it's not very tiny or it's not going to be very big. So make sure to have a middle size. And make sure to not cross the line. If you do cross the line, it's going to mess up everything. And make sure that your flow object is out of the frame so we do not have any problem or we do not face any bad stuff like that. I'm going to move it slide up if it's uh okay i think it's crossing the domain object i'm going to go to edit mode i'm going to select it i'm going to move it up something like this and now it's time to grab this object as well go to top view and make sure that it's aligned with the cookie because actually the fluid is going to drop on the cookie and yeah that's what we want okay so if you want to have a great fluid or a big fluid you can scale it up or scale it down whatever you wish now it's time for some fluid okay select the cookie object and uh, go to the physics tab click fluid and make it an effector okay the cookie object as an effector and then if we just mess up something we can also tweak around with the settings but i hope it's not gonna make any problem I'm going to select the domain object, I'm going to hit fluid, and I'm going to make the type to domain. Control S to save your file, in, uh, in case you lost data, you will have a backup. Okay, so we created a domain. It's not a case, it's a liquid, and you can play around with the resolution that you're on for the final uh, fluid. Yeah, and make sure to uh, turn off every colli side collision uh, to, to just have a bottom collision. And yeah, that's gonna work for us. And uh, for the first time, we are going to. Uh, okay, so we don't see any particle here. Uh, that's because we have messed something up. Uh, I'm just gonna look for something that we don't have. Maybe the scale of this object, we're gonna make it smaller. Okay. So I think the resolution is not enough for the object to emit some particles here. I'm going to make the resolution to 128. And I'm going to refresh it. I'm going to scale it. Maybe. And I'm going to move it down. Oh, we don't have any flow object. That is why it's not going to work for us. Click fluid. Add a type to flow. Now what we have, there's nothing. Because we have set the type to smoke. Make sure that it's liquid. Now we have a bunch of particles inside the icosphere. Uh, we just need to have a preview. So we're going to select the domain object, make the resolution again to 32. And let's try it. What we get, I'm going to click play. So we have some particles. If we just, just look at those particles, we not have so many of them. But if I just increase the resolution, we're going to have a lot of them. I'm going to make it 60 maybe to see what is going on. With our, with our particles. As you can see, it's falling down, down, going all the way down. It's, uh, it's just hit those cookie. And uh, I think it's misaligned. So what we need to do, we're going to select this object. I'm going to grab it to here. Now if we replay it, we're going to have something good maybe now it's perfectly hitting the cookie and this is what we want okay so make sure that your domain object is aligned with uh, the plane underneath because we're gonna it's gonna feel very weird if it's not fitted with uh with the plan so make sure to fit it in I'm going to refresh it and hit Ctrl S. Uh, you can go for this animation, which is just a shape of a uh, icosphere falls down with just a little amount of fluid. If you want to have something like a tape or something you want to call it, I'm just going to call it uh, like uh, a tea coming out of a kettle or I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry for that. Okay, so you can just leave it a geometry, which just make a small drop of something. Uh, but if you go to and change it to inflow, it's going to be emitting fluid continuously. If you play it, as you can see, uh, 
it's playing it's the it's due to it we just have a 14 frame per second it's very slow if we just have a look at these and we gonna look forward if we just uh, try gonna play it uh, yeah i think this is what we want maybe we can grab this object into side slightly so it also interact with the upper body of the of the cookie I'm just gonna play it and uh, yeah, it's good. But I think slightly moving it into X axis maybe. We hit Control S to save it. Okay, guys. Oh, that's great. This is what we want. Okay, okay, okay. As you can see, we have turned off the collision with the side, so the particle does move and just get disappear. And it's gonna feel very weird. Uh, I know, I know. We can move it slightly into Y axis so we have more space to work with. I'm gonna re refresh it. I'm gonna play it and see what we get. Yeah. It's great, I think. Maybe if you just. Preview these. Okay, so in order to hide those mistakes, we can scale this thing up slightly because we have to. We don't have a bigger domain to actually um, control this stuff. For the side, it's just uh, those small uh, ex extension just feels like it's just stopping them from moving forward. But for the front, for for the straight side, it's gonna feel weird. So we just scale it up a little bit. If we replay it and if we have a look at these, uh, it's perfect, I think. Uh, yeah, it is good. Okay, so I loved it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the domain object, maybe, and I'm gonna make the resolution division to 156. You can go for 256 if you want to be crazy and you if you have a grid system you can go for a very huge number to have a realistic simulation going on so come down and click mesh to generate mesh instead of re replay i'm gonna make it all and is resumable and now it's time to click this piece of shit because it's gonna take so much time i'm gonna pause while backing Click backing and it started backing the fluid. Let's wait for. Okay, so after a huge break, it's not a huge for you, but it's for me because we got some badass fluid. Yeah. Actually, we got some problems and we have to re back it again because it is not working perfect. As if you, if you just select it, share its mode, maybe if you try, okay. If you play it, I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna show you what the problem is. The main problem is that we have border here, which actually stopping fluid from hitting that wall because we don't have any object, like a collision object on the side. So maybe we can try it out. We can have something here that hits that object. Sorry for cancelling your back because we're gonna add some other objects and I'm gonna scale up our 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 domain object. Ah, obviously. I'm gonna scale it on X axis. Sorry bros, but I have to do it. I have never expected something very bad happens to it. I'm gonna scale it to here. Maybe to the walls. As you can see, we have to align this line with it. And then we can also add some other tiny cubes here to 
like uh, those those trash objects or any other objects in the scene and maybe we can increase the sky scale off it on y-axis and we're gonna move it we can also okay i'm gonna move it into that axis oh i think i have moved it very far away let's play it again and see how does it feels like yeah it's good okay so we are going to add some small cube objects hit shift a i'm gonna grab it into x axis i'm gonna move it up like that and i'm gonna align it with the plan object scale it up maybe if you just move it down rotate it i'm gonna move to camera view and i'm gonna move and scale it and y-axis maybe if we just try it out i'm gonna move to the first frame and i'm gonna rotate it on y-axis i'm gonna scale it on y-axis move it on y-axis scale it on x-axis maybe just move it to here scale it on z-axis we just want to have a rough object or you can say just a rough understanding or a rough data that we have something here i'm gonna move it up slightly i'm gonna scale it z axis go to camera view yeah it's good enough we can you know it's fine for now we just need a, a rough object here to actually manipulate or to run the fluid on make sure that these objects is inside the the domain object if it's not inside the domain objects it's gonna make so many problems for us that we can't solve even though i'm gonna go to solid view i'm gonna go inside the cube and try to just make it inside the cube maybe make sure that it's inside if you go to camera view uh, yeah it's good enough now hit shift d and to oh before duplicating it make sure that you add a fluid and it's an effector and then click shift d into y axis and also if you go to edit mode i'm gonna go to edge selection just slightly to add a subtle detail like moving these objects to the side I'm gonna duplicate it again and uh, move it to have maybe make sure that it's inside uh, the domain object. Solid, I'm gonna move it up slightly. I'm gonna move this up as well. Move up, and maybe we can just scrape it to here, shift it into y axis. I'm gonna move it like that. I'm gonna move it down or up or somewhere, but make sure to fit it in. And if we play it, we got some rough shapes here. And we need something beneath those uh, small cubes, maybe for just a simpler understanding that there is also a small uh, extension or whatever you wanna call it is here. So I'm gonna rotate it on X axis. Sorry for a very long tutorial, but I have to explain everything. If I don't, then you people are gonna ask me question in the comment. And this is, uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna scale it. Just slightly, I'm gonna move it to here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to X axis, go to, uh, wireframe and I'm gonna scale it on Y axis as well. Move it on Y axis and scale it on Y axis just slightly. Make sure that it is inside uh, the domain object or you can also rotate it on x axis just slightly grab it down maybe maybe slightly up 
Okay. Control S. You can also do it for the other side by hitting Shift D into X axis and move it to here. Like that. Hit tab, go to edit mode and select a face. I'll uh, just grab it into X like that. Okay, so control S, go to wireframe, select the domain object. Go ahead and to the type, make it replay and make sure to decrease the resolution because we just want to see what is going on. I'm going to make it 45 maybe. I'm going to go first frame. If I play it, oh, turn off mesh for now because I just want to see the preview. Okay. Uh, Let's inflow great. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna play it. And let's see what we get. Okay, so I think it's perfect. Now it's time to make those cubes for shadow catchers to actually add small amount of shadows, make it a shadow catcher, 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 and also make it a shadow catcher. Maybe that side object, shadow catcher. Oh, this this object is going out of the cube. I'm gonna delete the next axis. Maybe I'm gonna move it up like that. I'm gonna go to camera view and see how this looks like. Control S, maybe slightly up. Okay, so guys, really sorry for rebacking it, but we have to do it. Uh, I'm just gonna come to here. First, we're gonna bump up the uh, subdivision to 140. Hit Enter. Come down, click Mesh, Control S. Uh, replay type to All and hit Back All before backing it. Control S and Back All. Let's wait for this. Okay, so we got some fluid. If you're not happy with it, you can just increase the resolution to something very high. You can play around with the time scale, which is the speed of the simulation. You can just increase or decrease it to actually adjust the simulation speed. You can also play around with the flow object to make it a geometry or input or whatever you want to make it. You can also play around with different stuff like making it very smaller and subtle or you can also make the flow object very smaller to not have a huge amount of fluid in the scene uh, if we play it yeah we got some problems again you can just hit the render but uh in my case i would like to uh free it all again because we have missed those stuff. We're gonna turn the border collision on because now the border collision is very, very important because we are using this domain object as the wall collision object. And if there is no collision, nothing is gonna happen. So you can also just uh, turn on some of them. If you look at the view, viewport and uh, front view. So this is the front view. The camera side is the front view. You can turn off front and back. Turn on uh, X axis or right and left and uh, save it. You can uh, bake it or you can just go for the previous one. Maybe if you want. Uh, for my case, I'm going to bake it. Okay, so now we got some fluid and some cookies. Now it's time to set up the lighting and other stuff. Okay, so. I have put it the link in the description to the SDRI. You can use it. In my case, I'm just gonna open it and I'm gonna control as many times. If I just crashed it, I will have the file back on. Okay, so it's uh, good. Yeah. Uh, the main thing that we are missing right here that the shadows is uh, it feel like it's floating in the air. 
we want the shadow to be casted perfectly. In order to do that, what we can do is to grab or plan a little bit up. Here is the, let me just, just open these and this is the shadow catcher. Uh, we can grab it up. Just slightly, you know. You can shut it smooth if you want. Now if you go to a render view, you will see some good uh good stuff. You can also change the material if you want. I'm gonna make it something like uh uh something like these, maybe. We're gonna shut it smooth. I'm gonna decrease the roughness maybe. I'm gonna increase the subsurf width to something higher value so the 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 light will pass through these and I can also select the camera, go to camera, viewport display, and I can increase the pass out to see what is the actual scene going on. Okay, so now simulation is done. It's time to set up the final scene. I'm just gonna go for the samples. I'm gonna make it 50 in my case. You can just increase it if your system is good enough. And you can also change the format to FFmpeg if you want, or you can also leave it at PNG. I'm gonna save it. It's time to render an image. Let's try it out and see what we get. Okay, so it's rendering. And uh, yeah, let's wait. Okay, so it's rendered. Now it's time to go to compositing, use nodes, and now add an output, which is, sorry, input, which is a movie clip. Uh, click this icon, you will get a movie clip here. Click it, and now add output and a weaver node. Connect, uh, okay. So before connecting anything into weaver, let's just add an alpha over node. I'm just gonna search for alpha over here connect this image into the down image socket and this one to the upper one connect it to the image and connect this also with the composite node and now what we get is a final render that we see and we have composited everything together so you can hit a render animation to render everything up so that's how it works and yeah that was for the day. If you want to get more like that, you can hit the subscribe button. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the next one.